Welcome everyone. My name is Gary. I work at the art and design department, supporting graphic design, UX, UI, visual arts, and interior design and interior architecture programs. Um, my background is in fine arts. Um, I worked in graphic design, branding, and UX design prior uh, joining UC Berkeley Extension. So with us today, my partner in crime is Ivan Chujillo, specializes in packaging design, branding, UX design, worked for Kimberly Clark Corporation, Acuity Brands, Nice Limited, and ADM IDEO. He is also a freelance designer, has worked with uh, Dunhill, Puma, Safeway, Lexus, uh, Samsung, Emory uh, University, and Marilyn Jaker uh, Skincare. He is currently a program director of graphic, graphic UX and interactive design at UC Berkeley Extension. And he will be presenting this info session in, um, in a minute. And we also have some of our instructors joining us today to discuss their um, design in general and as well as give us an overview of their courses. Um, so with us later will be Steve Warner, uh, Julie Downing, and Tommy Garrick. So during this presentation, you could drop your um, questions in the Q&A box below on the control panel, and we will answer any questions that you may have. And without further ado, I will let Yvonne take over um, this presentation. Thank you, Gary. Hi, everyone, and welcome to UC Berkeley Extension uh, to the professional program in graphic design info session. So as Gary mentioned, we have, uh, you know, some of our instructors participating today. And so you get to hear from uh, them, you know, about the courses, their perspectives. Uh, and Gary and I will run the, the info session. So, um, you know, when it comes to the competitive environment in which graphic designers like are in high demand, that's what the market tell us like these days. For instance, the Bureau of Labor of Statistics projects a 4% growth rate for graphic designers from now until 2026. Uh, and that's, a, you know, a percentage that it's, uh, you might think that 4% is uh, really small, but it's actually like in the medium. Uh, fields that are eight, you know, to 15 to 13% are the ones that are in high demand but also like 4%, 5%, 3%, it's not as bad. There's growth in the projection, in the uh, profession. So uh, things that we recommend for, for you to succeed in our program and in your career as a graphic designer is to have a bachelor's degree, like that's highly recommended. Uh, and your bachelor's degree, of course, doesn't have to be in graphic design. It can be in anything else you might have. And, and we highly recommend that because the majority of the jobs that are out there uh, in terms of the graphic design industry requires a bachelor's degree. And so how do we like come into picture? You have your bachelor's degree and then you uh, take the professional program in graphic design, and that leads to different opportunities, right? Uh, so it can be that by the time you finish the program, uh, you are a junior graphic designer or a graphic designer. There are different titles for uh, different specialties within the profession. You can be also like call a production designer or production artist, a digital producer, a visual designer, an illustrator or infographics designer, a brand designer, package designer, interactive designer. So why are we here? Like <clears throat> the you know, the beauty of continuing education in a way is that it let you do things in a more flexible way than what you did with your bachelor's, right? Uh, our programs are short, 
right? Like we uh, don't offer degrees, we offer uh, certificates and that's totally okay in the profession. So like, why are we here? Because we can meet your needs as a student in many different ways. Um, you know, some of you might come for a career change. Uh, that means that, uh, you know, like probably what you went to school for before is not what you wanna do the rest you know, of your life. So you might come to us for that particular reason, to get education in a quick manner and be able to, you know, like have those, you know, fundamental skills that are required in the, in the field. Uh, some of you might come for career advancement. And that means that uh, if you are already working in, in the profession, but you need to uh, enhance, you know, like some type of skills, then you can join individual courses so to, to be able to meet your personal goal. And what the program uh, does is that, you know, you learn uh, through theory and practice of graphic design. And that means like hands-on activities, hands-on exercises that you're gonna do with all of your instructors in the different courses. And then the main goal of the program itself is to create a professional portfolio so that by the time you finish the program, uh, you can show uh, to people, to potential employers, or even uh, to grad schools that, you know, you have a graphic design experience, you have a graphic design background, and that you know your portfolio speaks for the quality of work that you can produce. Um, let's talk about the curriculum overview. So there are uh, seven different required courses. That's all it is. Uh, the program can take between one to two years. That's sort of the average time of completion. And it can be done part-time or full-time. Part-time, you can take one or two courses per semester. Uh, if you take one course per semester, that will be seven semesters, like two and a half years. If you take two courses per semester, that will be uh, four semesters. But if you are interested in doing it full-time, you can be done in as little as two semesters. So like, let's say that uh, you want to start this spring, then you can, if you're doing it full time, then you can be done uh, by the end of summer. And so here are the, the different required courses. Um, we have visual design principles and in visual design principles, you will learn uh, particular aspects of um, those design principles, right? Like uh, page layout, page layout, color theory, uh, dealing with grids, uh, knowing how to, you know, like set up your pages and navigate, uh, uh, through uh, doing multiple exercises that are gonna enhance your design skills. Uh, you will we'll talk about, you know, navigation systems uh, for web in uh, towards the end of the course. And there are two different uh, particular uh, projects for, for this course. Uh, the first one, it's an identity system. And the second one, it's to create a website or an application layout in which you're gonna apply all of those different design principles that you have learned uh, throughout the semester. And then uh, Illustrator 1 and InDesign, uh, Steve Werner is gonna talk about those in a little while. So I will let him explain that. And um, that, that will come in a little, you know, a little while. 
And then in typography fundamentals, you will be uh, learning all of the different aspects about typography. And typography, it's not about uh, speed in the way that you, how many words can you type per minute or anything like that. It is in line with what type of graphics you have uh, that you're gonna be working with on your page. And the way that you learn typography, it's with, you know, there are um, a bunch of rules and we learn those rules, but then you also, after you learn the rules, you also learn how to break the rules, right? To make your design, uh, you know, in the aesthetic that you want, uh, knowing what are the, the fundamentals and knowing what needs to be done and how can it happen. So you learn about uh, hierarchy, uh, you learn about creating, um, you know, like different levels of hierarchy. So like, you know, like dealing with headlines, with pull quotes, with uh, picture credits, captions and things like that, that you normally see in a book, in a magazine or on a website. Um, and then uh, in Photoshop, you will learn uh, different aspects of, you know, like different tools. Um, and then like the most important thing that you will do in that course is to uh, learn how to create, um, oh, I'm blinking out, uh, learn how to create composites. So uh, you will work with, you know, like grabbing different components, different bits from like 10, 20 different images and doing a composite into one single image in a way that makes sense, in a way that, you know, like you're gonna be able to isolate like all of these different uh, like content info from all of those different pictures and create a new composition that is seamless, that it's streamlined and that, uh, you know, like works like functionally. And then uh, in the web design with HTML5 and CSS3, you will learn how to code from scratch uh, all by hand uh, in a very simple way. We will use a text editor, uh, which every computer has comes with that, whether it's a PC or a Mac. Uh, and that's all you need basically to create a website. And of course, we'll use Photoshop to bring photos in, uh, maybe the usage of Illustrator to create a logo or anything like that and merge it all together on, on your website. And the idea with that is that um, the instructor will walk you through week by week uh, in different aspects as to what can be done and how can you accomplish like those different uh, skills that she will be teaching. Um, so you'll go from creating like wireframes, right? Like an ambition of uh, the software of your preference and and then put that together to create a boutique website uh, by the end of the semester. And in the graphic and web design portfolio, this is the course that you should take last so that all of the different um, courses that you have taken are gonna come into play with creating your final portfolio because the teacher will uh, like teach you how to like polish, refine, and edit the work that you have created in the previous six classes. However, you can take this course also like if you're doing it full-time, then you can take it in the second semester with along with Photoshop and web design. So that will be your three last courses. And uh, now Gary's gonna talk about um, 
the different electives that are available. So, so yeah, so within the graphic design um, programs, uh, we have something called further advancement. So these are not necessarily electives, but rather um, they are there for you to further develop your uh, professional skills or even, you know, add on to your um, the new knowledge that you have acquired from the program. Uh, for instance, the top, on, on top of the list is Adobe Digital Tools, uh, which is um, Steve Warner is the instructor, one of the instructors for the course. And it is a um, fast track to learn all about Adobe Illustrator, uh, Photoshop, as well as InDesign, uh, the combination of all of that. Uh, we also have Essentials of Motion Graphics. Um, so there are many courses in the further um, advancement um, tracks that you can actually become maybe interaction design. Uh, for instance, like Essentials of Motion Graphics, uh, 2D animation, video and video editing. Uh, we also have um, explainer videos and sound effects that are on the website. Um, and also 2D animation and video editing that we mentioned about. So those are those those components and courses can further your knowledge into interaction design. Uh, we also have illustrating uh, children's books. Um, Julie Downing will be joining us later and talk about that uh, course as well uh, for you to become an illustrator if that's your niche. And of course, branding. Next. Okay. Al, Gary, can you talk about the internship also? Do you want me to talk yeah, about Yeah, so that? the internship um, is basically uh, we required our, our uh, students. Um, it's not part of our program per se, but it's rather it's a different department that are, will guide you through, um, you know, uh, career coaching as well as resume writing and as well, obviously, um, within internship opportunities. So in order to join this uh, internship um, course, uh, you would need to finish the program first. And there is an application deadline. And I will uh, send you uh, the link in the chat box in a second. And uh, basically you would need to enroll into it uh, before the last, uh, before your last semester in order to be qualified for the, uh, for the course. Thank you. And of course, uh, you know, within all that, we also have some of the UX courses that can be taken um, if that's your um, that's your direction that you would like to go for, uh, down in the path um, that will enhance your graphic design skills and to bring it into a more user experience um, uh, field uh, if that's your interest later on. And so the courses that we have available for uh, that are essential. So if UX design, user interface design or UI design, Diagramming and prototyping for UX, accessibility in UX design, human-centered design for data visualization, as well as design thinking and UX strategy. So the technology to join our programs is actually very simple. So uh, we're recommending uh, for graphic design is either MacBook uh, of 16 gigabyte RAM or a PC with similar um, capabilities. Uh, we also recommend a Adobe membership, uh, which uh, as a student, you can get a student discount for $19.99 per month. And that will give you all the uh, you know, Adobe tools that you need uh, to be successful in the program. Uh, that includes you know, Adobe um, Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe uh, InDesign, um, as well as um, you know, um, After Effects and all the uh, all other interaction uh, programs that we often use in the program. Um, as well as a printer um, that Yvonne can go into um, would be useful as a graphic designer for you know color proofing, proofing, as uh, so well look at your overall design in a in a, a more physical form rather than just on screen. Thank you, Gary. So like yeah, like if you're gonna go into graphic design, we highly recommend a printer to get a printer just to do testing at home uh, for you know, like what you're setting up, because basically what you see on the screen doesn't necessarily like reflects exactly the same as when you print it. And so like, if you don't do like, uh, you know, like these different tests, like proofing that 
your colors are okay because color in a way is different through a laptop or through a computer rather than when it's printed. Why? Because light gets pushed with the computer, right? Like colors become more vibrant. And when we print like uh, that same design is gonna look a little bit different in printing. It's gonna look a little bit duller, dull. Uh, and so you want to enhance and do sort of like color correction if needed. Uh, also, like margins can be like sometimes like complicated in a way to to print. And so that's why it's important to have that at home, just to be able to not just go with whatever is on the screen, but with whatever the final uh, format will be, right? Like these days we're doing things for like digital environments, like, you know, like digital ads for like Instagram or Facebook or web banners and things like that. And, but then we also do like printing jobs. So that's why uh, the recommendation. And so uh, now we're gonna talk about, uh, you know, like the different instructors that we have in the program. And after I do the, um, the introductions of these different instructors, then I'm going to uh, give time to them to like talk about the, their courses. So we have Aleka Edwards. She's a senior motion designer and a, a DEI advocate and also an educator. Uh, she works at Sinusure Creative Agency and teaches essentials of motion design. Steve Werner, uh, he's an educator, trainer, author, and publisher, and works for Adobe Systems Incorporation, teaches Illustrator in design and Adobe Digital Tools. Tom Gary, it's a creative the director and educator and works for himself, teaches visual design and the portfolio course. Nicolas Gutierrez, he is a freelance photographer and an educator also works for himself, uh, teaches Photoshop and Adobe Digital Tools with Steve. Uh, Dr. Shelley Grundler, uh, she's a typography consultant and creative learning strategies. Uh, she works for herself also at, at TypeCamp and teaches a typography course. Ian Bolden, he is a motion designer and an educator and works for Google, teaches explainer videos and sound design. Um, and Shoaib Ali Qureshi, he is a senior art director, freelance animator and an educator, works at Digitals and teaches 3D animation and VFX. And I just want to mention briefly that all of the courses that are interactive, like Essentials of Motion Design, uh, Explainer Videos, 3D Animation, and 2D Animation, like those courses are only offered in the spring semester and in the fall semester each year. They're not offered in the, in the summer semester. And the required courses are also like offered every semester, uh, three times a year, fall, spring, and summer, and with the exception of the graphic design uh, portfolio that it's also in the spring and the fall semester. Uh, Victoria Arriola, she is a creative art director and an educator and works for herself. And she teaches a typography fundamentals course. Josh Halsett is a senior manager, brand activist, educator, and author, and works at Design Matter and teaches visual design principles. Uh, Julie Downing, who is here with us tonight too, today, uh, teaches freelance illustrator. Sorry, uh, she's a freelance illustrator and author and an educator. And um, works for herself 
and teaches illustrating children's books. Ivera Karpatyova, it's an animator, illustrator, director, and educator, and works also for herself, teaches study animation and video editing. Nancy Cutler, she's a, a creative director at Midnight Oil Design, that's her own company too, and teaches visual design. Ulhas Moses, he's a founder, visual, and UX designer, at UMS Design Studio, that's also his own uh, organization and teaches a portfolio course. And uh, I also teach the portfolio course, sometimes the visual design and packaging design courses. And now I'm gonna uh, let Steve uh, talk about his course. And so, um, Steve, you're more than welcome to uh, share your screen. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, let me do that. Gary, can you see that? Can you see my screen, Gary? Yeah, everything's yeah. good. Okay, good. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Glad to be here. Uh, I have kind of a confusing task because I have to talk about three different classes and I wanted to try to give you a little explanation for that. I I have focused in my, in my learning and teaching and such for the last few decades on three programs in particular that are sort of the core programs that Adobe as really core to the way Adobe works because they're the three uh, deepest programs, the three most integrated programs. They're probably also the three that you really have to know in terms of almost any kind of job in graphics that you're going to get. Um, and I'm not teaching Photoshop uh, at, here at Berkeley Extension. Uh, my colleague, uh, Nico, uh, is, is teaching that class with me on the Adobe uh, Digital uh, Tools class. But they're really all integrated, and that's one of the reasons we offer that as an option. So first, I'm going to be talking about the individual Illustrator class that I teach. Next, I'll be talking about the individual InDesign class I teach. And the third thing I'll be talking about is the Adobe Digital Tools class, which we offer as a single 16-week-long entity that gives you really a deep dive into those three applications working together. So let me move on to... Illustrator. So the Illustrator class is a 10 session class. So there's nine sessions of teaching and then there's a presentation on the last week. Um, it's focused on vector art. And so some of you may not be quite clear about the difference between vector art and art that's made up of pixels or images. And Illustrator focuses on the vector aspect of art. So what we're going to talk about here basically is just to introduce you to that concept if you're not familiar with it. Vector art basically is made up of mathematical shapes and paths and stuff like that that let you create things that can be scaled to different sizes that that can be um, let you let you work uh, so you could use something either really large or really small. So it's ideal for doing things like logos and icons for infographics, which are which you see everywhere as ways of telling information about things and for realistic product art. Um, and Illustrator has been around for a really long time. It's the oldest of the Adobe programs. It's been around for 35 years. So it has an incredible collection of different, different tools that you can learn from it. And we use, we learn some of those tools in the, in the, in the Illustrator class, as well as in the Adobe digital tools class. And in the class, we, we basically give you an introduction to using the drawing tools and the pen tool, as well as the other tools and panels that are, that are part of the program. And it gives you a chance to learn how to sketch because you have to put your ideas down on, on either a, a tablet or paper, and then develop that into, into one of the kinds of things that you're creating, either icons or infographics or things like that. So we teach you those tests, those uh, those approaches, and the class has a series of steps to take you through that. Uh, we learn for the first project you'll work on is logo redesign. 
Then you learn how to create icons. Everybody know what icons are because you see them everywhere. Uh, infographics are visual ways of communicating things. And I'll show you examples of these next. So here's an example of some a couple of the uh, a couple of student projects where they took an original logo. They're they're assigned in this class. They're assigned a logo you, based on first come first serve from some some different companies and and brands that you can work with. Uh, in this case, we have Office Depot, and it was and the student turned it into a different kind of redesign to try to modernize it. A uh, similar thing was done with the with the Schwinn product. We also have icons, and here's infographics that are made up of icons and infographics, different ways of visually communicating things. And here's a couple more student examples of what's done in that class. And then a more complex kind of art is realistic product art. You may not believe, but the, the product over on the left-hand side is actually done with Illustrator. You'd think that it was something, something done might be done in Photoshop or something like that, but actually by using gradients and and uh, lighting and things like that, you can create realistic product art. Um, this particular student who did this in 2020, later on in her portfolio class, developed this further when she was trying to show off, learn how to show how show off the particular brand that she was working on. So, so that you can do really impressive stuff with realistic product art. Now, the InDesign class is also a ten week class, um, and it focuses on uh, basically how to create, uh, uh, how to do uh, the, how to do precision layout, and. It's a ten week class as well. It has nine nine weeks and then a presentation on the last on the last class. And InDesign can be used for professional publishing. So really, you 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 you'd think that you could do something like that, maybe an Illustrator or something like that. And you can do some simple kinds of layouts for publishing in Illustrator. But when you want to do more complicated, more high quality typography, when you want to do long documents, um, it, InDesign is really the program to do. It can be used for, for almost of all kinds of professional publishing. It could be used for something as small as business cards, it could be used for brochures, it could be used for books and magazines. And so we try to teach you the basic essential things that you need to learn about to do that. You need to learn about how to create pages that have different kinds of layouts of different kinds and longer documents that require you to uh, create something that will be able to be as many as like hundreds or even even hundreds or thousands of pages. So it gives you incredible publishing capabilities. So in the first class, you just start with the first couple of classes, you just start learning the basics, doing a postcard, doing a resume, and the two main projects that you work on in the class, the two largest projects, is as a midterm project, we have you create a three-panel brochure. So here's an example of two sides of a three-panel brochure one student created. Um, and that requires putting together all the things you've learned up until that point in the class. And the final project, which takes requires two or three weeks, three or four weeks actually to work on, is to create a magazine layout because you have to create both the cover and the inside pages. And here's a couple of cover pages for the InDesign, for the InDesign project. So when you're when you're working on that, you're you're putting together all of the things together. Now the program that puts things together in terms of working in all all three programs is a 16 session class. Uh, that will be starting this uh, this semester. It's we've offered it before uh, in the last year, and I co-teach this with Nicholas Gutierrez. He's the one who teaches the Photoshop part of the class, and I teach the Illustrator and InDesign parts of the class. And so, should I uh, say sorry to interrupt you? Should I uh, mention what Nicholas does in Photoshop? Yeah, you should. You should do that because I can't show that part off. Could you? You want to want to take that for a second and do that? That would yeah, be good. Sure. So uh, the course is 16 weeks. So you have five weeks of Photoshop, five of Illustrator, and five of InDesign. And there will be a presentation on week 16 where you're going to have everything integrated into one document. Um, and so what happened, you start the course with Photoshop. 
And then uh, what you do in that is to learn like different tools, right? Like layers. Uh, you start like also using the uh, paint bucket, the drawing uh, tools. Uh, you start also like uh, doing color correction. Uh, and then that will bring you sort of like the basics, right? Like to do different effects. Uh, Nicholas will walk you through the different menus and different possibilities that Photoshop has. And then uh, you will create sort of like simple composites uh, by the end of week number five. And at that moment, Steve uh, takes over with Illustrator. Yeah, I have on the screen um, the two main projects, the two main assignments that you'll be doing for the Photoshop class is a book cover and a magazine cover composites. It's, that's the first thing you learn to, to do composites on is book covers and magazine covers. And you also have as your, as your second assignment in the Photoshop segment, uh, doing creating a design that's going to be used both for print and also for web and also for mobile, because in these days, a company or, or brand needs to be able to show their uh, their stuff off on different on different platforms. And so he shows you how to how to create that. So to continue on um, the in the illustrator part, we we cover part of what we do in the illustrator class, we focus uh, on learning the basic tools of how to create draw the, with the drawing tools, how to create uh, a logo redesign for a company, how to do an icon, how to do icons for a company. Now, the particular examples I'm showing you, by the way, for the Adobe Digital Tools, all of these were, were created by the same student. It's 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 in, you're encouraged to pick a brand, either your own brand or a brand or a, a topic that you want to work on through all the different assignments in Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign. And so th these particular examples were for one of the students in a previous class, and she was doing these for her for her business, actually. So there's actually a tie between all of these things. So she was she worked for a company that does that does uh, where, where she where she was using all of these in the different kinds of things her company was doing. In the InDesign class, we learn also how to do layouts. We usually start with a postcard, something really simple. And then we also learn the more complicated parts of creating a four page flyer. And then finally, the last project is you do a longer project, which is gonna be multi-page and, and learn how to create all, use all the different tools of, that you use when you're creating a multi-page document. And so these, again, were all examples that that particular student was working on. Now, just to clarify things a little bit, uh, in terms of the difference between taking the individual classes, if you were taking the individual Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign classes, you would have nine weeks of instruction because the last week is a presentation. In the Adobe Digital Tools class, you're taking five weeks from each for each application, and then on the 16th week, you have you have the you actually have the presentation of all of the work you've done over the 15 weeks before that. And so the individual classes can get into things a little bit more deeper and can give you a little bit more preparation for doing a portfolio. But what the digital tools class it gives you a quick jump start into learning some of the most critical tools that you would need to use in almost any kind of graphic arts that you're doing. So uh, it's uh, both of them have their their advantages, and depending on how you're how you're uh, how what you need for you, for yourself, you can consult with uh, Yvonne and and the and the staff to figure out which things would be helpful for your particular for your particular needs. So that is pretty much what I wanted to cover. Thank you, Steve. Uh... Gary, are there any questions for Steve or for me in the Q&A session? Yeah, there are three. Um, so one of which is, is it possible to waive out some of the basic level courses if um, if I have prior experience? Or maybe coming in the program as an advanced standing, perhaps? Um, 
Well, the answer for that, it's like, yes, only one course, because that's what the university policy has for these short programs of study. For a program that it's seven courses, only one course can be replaced. They cannot be, they can be waived, but you need to, if you're interested in doing the program, you still need to complete the 14 units. And that means uh, doing a substitution course. And then it also depends of your portfolio. So like if that's your interest, we will require you to uh, send us your transcripts as, as well as your portfolio through a PDF or if you already have a website, uh, and then you let us know what course you would like to substitute, and then we evaluate that. Um, the next question is similar to that. So I took a uh, web design course um, as an undergrad. Can I use this course as part of a professional program certificate credit? Uh, and unfortunately, you cannot, for the reason that I just explained, the uh, 14 units in the program need to be completed at the UC Berkeley extension. You can substitute it if you want, if needed. Uh, if you take Adobe Digital Tools class, does that mean that you don't need to take individual classes to complete the certificate? Uh, no, the Adobe Digital course is for those that, you know, like don't have any kind of experience and would like to uh, sort of like do it in a bootcamp manner, right, like prompt and quick uh, before taking visual design principles course, which is course number one official in the program. Uh, but the Adobe Digital Tools does not replace any of the individual courses. And the last question is, is commonly asked, I don't have any prior experience regarding graphic design. Is that okay to join the program? Yes, by all means. And if that's your interest, Adobe, Adobe Digital Tools will be a good course to start with. And that is all the questions that we have for the time being. So we can continue with our presentation. Um, Tom, are you are you here? Tom is not here, but I can see Tom as a participant, not necessarily a co-host. So I try to um, send him a link, but. Well, let's continue in the meantime with the presentation and I'll continue with that. And Gary, can you support Tom and see if- uh... Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Okay. Uh, is safe, can you stop sharing your screen yes, and I, I'll continue? I can, I can do that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for- uh, your presentation. All right. So all right. So let's continue with this. So um we have at the moment we are teaching uh our courses live online. Uh, in person, very similar to what we're doing today via Zoom with your instructor and all of your classmates. Uh, so we call that format, uh, format live online or also like in person. You're not physically in person in campus, uh, but you are with uh, your instructor and your classmates simultaneously. Um, and then like all the courses are offered uh, every semester, uh, spring, summer, and fall with the exception of the, the graphic and web design portfolio that it's only offered in a spring and summer semesters. Um, all the courses, by, by the way, are set up that 
you are doing a project or sometimes even like two projects or three projects within the same semester so that by the end of the semester you have tangible outcomes very similarly to what Steve showed you uh, for his course that happens in all of the different courses in our program so that you know like those outcomes will fit the final portfolio um what do you need to do like so if you when you come to us in order to earn your award of completion your certificate then you will register for the program. That's a one-time fee of $100 that should be done, you know, at the beginning of your, um, of your program. Like you don't have to enroll like right away. You can enroll on the second semester. You can test the waters on the first semester with a course or two and see how you feel. And after that, uh, if you would like to continue with the program, then we will recommend you to uh, register for it because we communicate in a different manner with students that are uh, in the program uh, with those that are only taking individual courses. And then the second step is to complete courses with a grade of C or better um and then you pay for each course individually and those prices are available on the website so you pay as you go if you join one course you pay for one course if you join for four courses then you pay for four courses but you don't have to pay in advance or anything like that and then uh you will let us know by the time you complete the program uh, your seven required courses. Hello. Oh, yes. Julie just joined us. Oh, yeah. okay. Thank hey. you, Julie. Hi. And then you will earn your award of completion after completing the seven required courses. And then let's make a pause uh, pause over here and let Julie uh, explain about her course. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And Julie, uh, good seeing you. Thank you for joining us. You're more than welcome to share yours. Okay, I'm gonna share it right now. Hopefully everybody can see it. It says it's loading. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Well, uh, thank you everybody for joining. So my name is Julie Downing and I teach a class called Illustrating Children's Books. So I have been both an author and illustrator of children's books for gosh, over 30 years. These are just a couple of the over 50 books I have illustrated. And lately I am doing quite a bit of writing and illustrating my own books. I started out as a traditional watercolor artist, but I'm doing more and more things that are kind of a collage of traditional um, watercolor, as well as some Photoshop and digital. So my class illustrating children's books is just a 10 week course in which you are gonna learn about the process for creating a children's picture book. Um, I think it's a more complicated process than people realize. So we start with sketches and ultimately are going to create a 32 page flat plan. And this is um, a standard 32 page book for most publishers. While we're creating the flat plan, we're gonna learn about things like visual variety, as well as create some memorable characters, one of the most important aspects of a children's book today. And the art that you're looking at that I'm showing you is all created by former Berkeley students in the class. One of the things we're gonna talk a lot about is revision because I think that uh, that is one of the most important aspects of 
doing a children's book. And then we're actually going to create an industry ready book dummy. This is from a student from last fall's class. And here are just a couple of the dummies, which is just a black and white or um, simple colored version of the story that you can send to a publisher. While we do the flat plan, we're also gonna learn about new techniques in which to finish your art, as well as complete final art for your portfolio. And again, these are just some of the examples of student artwork from um, the past class. And the wonderful one on the left with the monster was created by a student last semester. We do look at a lot of um, classic and new children's books. That's a wonderful way to find out what's going on in the industry, as well as actually do a lot of fun in-class exercises. One of the things I do is always start with what I call um, the attendance drawing, and all the students do the attendance drawing. So there you can see people drew themselves as a dog. And mostly what I hope we're gonna do is have fun in the class. It really is a wonderful class and a wonderful way to learn about children's books. Okay, that is, I'm gonna stop my share. And I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything they'd like to know. Um, no, we don't have any question regarding um, the course right now. Okay, great. Thank you for joining though, Julie. Nice seeing you. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, Yvonne, you need to unmute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I want to mention that uh, for every course that you take at UC Berkeley Extension in the graphic design program, uh, we teach you skills that are necessary in the industry, whether it's illustrator or illustrating children's book or visual design principles, whatever the course might be. Uh, it's always with those skills that are like being uh, seek out in the industry. Uh, another important thing is that we work, your instructors are all working professionals in the field. They practice, they live this day in and day out. Um, you know, like some of them, as I mentioned, work for themselves uh, as like Julie uh, and also Steve. Steve also works for Adobe and we have many, many different interesting backgrounds uh, of all of our instructors. And that's essential and that's different from other universities because you are learning with, you know, like working professionals, people that do this also for, for their own living. And, and that's important uh, in education, be able to transfer those skills because the teacher is bringing the skills that are happening in the industry into the classroom. And I think that's really essential in the outcomes uh, that our students produce by the end of each course. Um, Gary, I have a question for you. Was Tom able to join us? No, I sent him all the information. Um, he, he was having trouble locking in. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I have been uh, talking with him back and forth uh, via emails. Okay. Well, let's continue with the presentation and see if he can join us in a little bit. Mm. Uh, if not, then uh, you guys get to meet him while in class. So uh, what our graduates do after completing the program? So like here we have... Uh, you know, a small sample of students' uh, profiles, their websites are there. We will share this um, document with you in a couple of days after our media team uh, does captioning and some other things that 
need to happen before we send you this, but uh, you can see their portfolios. Uh, and that's why we put them there available for you. So as uh, Sunny Stevens, she is a visual designer at Serena and Lily. Uh, Clark Dolliver, he's a senior graphic designer at Phoenix Inc. Um, Ankita Mantri, it's head of design at Two. Uh, Daniel McWaters, it's a founder and CEO at Design Sake Studio. Uh, she uh, is the co-founder of Design Sake, and uh, this is Mark. Uh, she graduated in 2014 and quickly decided to go on her own. And, and she's been really successful. I'm gonna show you um, a couple of their portfolio pieces uh, of one or two of these students. Uh, Ricky Pasqual, he's a business owner and a designer, uh, works for himself at Dynamic Design and Print Solutions. Uh, he's uh, decided to also like go on his own after like one year or two year practice and open his, uh, you know, like design business and, and print business at the same time. And Jessica Lang, it's a graphic designer at Balsam Brands. So let me show you here a, a couple of um, her projects. Gary, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So by the end of, of your um, program, you will end up with a logo that represents yourself. Uh, you have a complete website, uh, like working, right? Like with your about page, right? Like what are you into? Like who you are and things like that the different kind of like projects uh, that you're gonna have in your portfolio. I see like Jessica graduated probably like three years ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or four. And she's still like the majority of the projects that she has over here uh, are from, you know, what she did in our program. So you can see here like, the quality of like the graphics, right? Like this is uh, a packaging uh, project that was on, uh, you know, in one of the courses. So you can see like how she treats, uh, let's go back to projects, how she treats like images and, and type setup, right, page layout, all of those different things uh, get taken into consideration. And you will end up with, you know, a portfolio of like this uh, caliber by the time you finish the program. So you can see like fine details about type setup and things like that, right? Like how do you integrate like type on, on the project that you're working on? This one, it's only like typography based. You don't have, you know, any images per se, but like uh, in this one, you have a bunch of like, different images, right? Like this was done uh, perhaps in the Photoshop course with Nicholas. And then in portfolio, we uh, will help you like edit and polish and refine all of those different skills. Uh, let me go back to our presentation and pull somebody else's. Oops. Let's do uh Susan. Oh sorry, like that. She put a passport protection in there. 
uh, Clark, you know, like designed different uh, things. He was an employee of the university uh, and did, you know, like all of these different things. And then when it came to the portfolio, we redesigned some of these uh, like different flyers and different ways of communication with for our, you know, like various sense of Cal. Uh, but this was all edited and, and changed and also like done, uh, you know, like while he was taking the program, he was applying those skills into uh, doing these projects. So like, let's go back to work. Uh, here was, um, you know, like in design, like a logo design, a logo type. And then with, you know, like color values and, you know, like different um, color systems, the CMYK, the RGB, the Pantom values that are necessary for a brand. So you can see here like different things that can be done. And, and a lot of this, you know, like you come with logos, you come with, at times individual pieces, and then we will refine those uh, in the portfolio course again. And so like he expanded the logo into like all these multiple uh, different outcomes. And Gary, how are we doing with time and Tom? Uh, Tom is not uh, able to lock in. Uh, we're currently at one o'clock, so we're over our time. Okay, so uh, let's wrap this up. So, uh, Jerry. Yeah, so what's next? So uh, you can actually, um, by, by joining our uh, info session today, you already created a, um, a student account. Um, so what you need to do is obviously uh, enroll in our course. The first course would be visual design principles and also sign up for a monthly email um, uh, newsletter, uh, which can be done through a short form on our um, program page. And it was a good idea to, you know, clue yourself in with the uh, design industry from, uh, right from the start. And I just want to briefly mention that all of the artwork that you saw during this presentation, it's done by, you know, like our students with their permission. And also here is a screenshot of our uh, portfolio review day, which we invite for the portfolio course, like different designers. Uh, art directors, creative directors to come and join us and join you on a one-on-one -on -one through breakout groups to give you feedback on your portfolio so that you have different uh, people like helping you along the way. Are there any questions in the yeah. Q yeah, so I'm from New York City. Would I be able to register for this program? Uh, there's nothing that say that you cannot. The only uh, thing that you have to be aware of is that these courses run in Pacific time and our courses are 6 p.m. to 9, to 9 p.m. or 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. and also uh, Saturday mornings, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. So if uh, you can be up uh, until midnight, I don't see why not, but that's something that you got to uh, think through, see if it is convenient for you or not because of the time difference. Uh, the next question is, are the courses offered at the same time in day every semester? Uh, sometimes, sometimes we change those, but normally like staff teaches in design on Tuesdays and illustrators on Saturdays. Um, we try to keep it as much as possible the same day of the week, but sometimes, you know, like we have to make minor, uh, 
like changes adjust in days of the week? So I also drop our um, program inbox email. Um, you can send us an email with any further questions you may have. Our email address is at extension dash graphic design at berkeley.edu. And anything you would like to add, Yvonne? No, that brings us to the end of our presentation. So uh, thank you for joining us today and, and listening to like us and what we offer. And we hope, uh, you know, you can join any of our courses that will begin uh, some of them next week, uh, others in February and other courses in March. So the, and also in April, there are different entry, uh, you know, like months to join up our courses. And of course, thank you our guests, uh, Steve and Julie for joining us out of their busy schedule. We really appreciate your time. Have a good afternoon, everyone. You take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.